One of the most appealing things to watching a game at Sioux Falls Stadium is how close fans are to the action. It's also one of the most dangerous, something the city of Sioux Falls hopes to change in the near future. Canaries manager Mike Meyer is always in the line of fire when he's on the field. He refuses to put his family in it. Yeah, it is scary. You know, when my wife and kids are in town, they have to sit behind the netting. Um, I won't let them sit anywhere where there's not netting in front of them, whether we're here or we're in Fargo or St. Paul or one of the other cities. The danger was driven home last month when a foul ball struck a young girl during a major league game at Houston's Minute Maid Park, sparking a debate about whether protective netting should be extended. You know, I think HBO Sports did a special on reaction time and you know, it doesn't matter if you're a former athlete, you're not getting your hands up to block it if a, if a, a line drive gets hit in the stands. The Minnesota Twins extended netting above the dugout and down the line at Target Field prior to 2018, though it does not go to the foul poles. That could become a trend with the Chicago White Sox and Washington Nationals announcing this week that they will extend netting to each pole. Ooh. No protections behind the dugout or down the line exist at Sioux Falls Stadium which hosts everything from Canaries to college and high school baseball, sparking concerns since seats are closer to home plate than at most major league ballparks. We want uh, baseball games to be an enjoyable and safe experience for all the, the spectators at the, the birdcage. Um, later this fall, later this summer, we'll be installing more netting um, at the ballpark that was scheduled in last year's budget for this year. Some weather delays, some foundational, you know, it's an older park, so getting the, the footings for that was a little more challenging than we first expected. So that'll be extended from uh, farther down the, uh, the dugouts and on both sides of the field. Nelson says the additional netting won't surpass a six-figure cost and will go forward regardless of whether or not the city and community decide to build a new stadium. Until the new netting is in place, and even after, it still falls on fans to mine their surroundings. It's a safe area in general, but fans do have to be, to be on the lookout as, as is announced at the games and as their signage. Um, if you have little kids, you know, you may want to make sure that you're sitting in an appropriate area of the stadium. Accidents do happen. I've been to places where they have netting that goes a long way down the sides and, and there's still, you know, fly balls that go in the stands or balls that just get over the, the backstop, you know, can hit people. So, you know, that's one of the things when you come to the game, it's to, to play, to watch the game, pay attention as best you can and, and make sure you're, you're able to protect yourself. Birds wrap up their series with St. Paul tonight. We'll have highlights at 10. The NBA draft is underway as we speak in Brooklyn this evening, and as expected, Duke's Zion Williamson will go number one to New Orleans. For a couple of local products, it'll likely be a much longer wait to see if they're picked. Former Jackrabbits Mike Dom and Skylar Flatten, along with ex-Coyote Matt Mooney, are holding out hope that they may get picked late in the second round. Flatten and Mooney have had a couple workouts with NBA teams, and Dom has been on draft radars for years as just the 10th player in NCAA history to score more than 3,000 points. If all three are not drafted, they'd likely look to sign with an NBA Summer League team and then look to sign either overseas or in the G League. The Minnesota Timberwolves are wheeling and dealing. They came in with the 11th overall pick in the first round, as well as the 43rd overall in the second. But about an hour ago, dealt the number 11 pick in Dario Saric to Phoenix for the 6th overall pick. We'll update you on KDLT News at 10 as to all the draft happenings. Also, the Minnesota Vikings will open training camp on July 26th. We're back in one moment.